Pokemon is one of the oldest video game franchises around. After being around for so long, it's no wonder that there have been countless spin-off titles that change up the traditional formula of the series. However, there is a new genre that Pokemon has yet to tackle. Hello everybody, welcome to Gameception, the show where we find games within games and then go deeper. Today, we are talking about how the Pokemon franchise could be the next in line to develop a game in the ever so popular auto chess genre. The Pokemon franchise started as a video game series that released in 1996. Since then, it has gone on to dominate the world by releasing an onslaught of games, TV shows, movies, stuffed animals, toys, cards, books. I think you get the picture. At its core, Pokemon is a traditional Japanese role-playing game, or JRPG for short. Alongside the turn-based battle system found in each game, the player has the ability to capture and train creatures called Pocket Monsters, or Pokemon. Pokemon are fundamentally super animals, each species with their own typing and special abilities. Pokemon are often kept as pets. According to the games and anime, they can even become lifelong friends. Pokemon is known for the collection aspect of the game, as well as the more well-known battling gameplay. Every mainline Pokemon game follows a story formula, created in the very first Pokemon games, Pokemon Red and Blue. Only a small number of official Pokemon titles differ from this formula. First, players receive their starter Pokemon, then go on to collect other Pokemon to strengthen their team and challenge Pokemon trainers in battles with the ultimate goal of becoming the very best like no one ever was. Pokemon is a game for all ages in mind. Anyone can pick it up and understand the basic mechanics. But if one is looking to be the best not only in game, but also in the real world, then they must do what it takes to compete in tournaments put on by the Pokemon Company. Each year there are a number of competitions held all over the world for anyone and everyone to compete in and eventually make their way to becoming the world champion. Draco Meteor from Jody onto that Pachirisu, uh, probably originally targeted for that guard jump, will connect, will deal some good damage, but we've already seen not enough. That Pachirisu is so bulky if that Mo Rotom's Leaf Storm wasn't proof enough, it just tanked a Salamence Draco Meteor and no flinch! So Rock Slide does come out from guard jump, that should be a double KO, no! 2 HP from Salamence, but fortunately we'll have to see, will the sand stick around? Yes. One more turn of sand does pick up the KO on Salamence. So Competitive Pokemon has been around for quite some time now. The first World Championships took place in 2009, even though there were other official competitions before. When I first dabbled in the world of competitive Pokemon battling, I was surprised to see how complicated being a Pokemon master really is. You almost need to have a master's degree in statistics and data analysis to succeed. The first thing a player must do if they want to be able to compete on a high level is to build up a team of Pokemon that are not only powerful, but can cover each other's weaknesses. Trainers also spend countless hours breeding their Pokemon to get the perfect stats, and then go on to train them and strengthen their stats even more. To make it anywhere close to becoming the world champion, players spend hours grinding, playing match after match, doing their best to learn what works and what doesn't. So if you're interested in the grand prize that the Pokemon company has to offer, you better be ready to spend most of your days training and practicing with your digital pets. Pokemon may be the biggest franchise of all time, but it's nowhere near the largest presence in the new and exciting world of esports. There are a lot of games that have become popular esports, and one of the biggest is League of Legends. League of Legends is a game that has amassed an enormous following, currently boasting a whopping 8 million concurrent players, that is, players who are currently active, not total accounts. With numbers like that, it's hard to believe that when it first started, not many knew what it actually was. Riot Games was formed by a couple of different people, including the originator of the Warcraft 3 mod, Defense of the Ancients. The idea was to make a standalone game that wasn't bogged down by the lore and characters of another game's universe, and thus, League of Legends was born. League is a multiplayer online battle arena, or MOBA. MOBAs are games where two teams go up against each other, attempting to capture or take over the other team's towers, and eventually their base. Each player can choose from a large number of champions or characters to play as. They each have their own abilities and different statistics, and then there are items and... 
I could go on and on about MOBAs, but today we are going to focus on a spin-off title of League of Legends called Team Fight Tactics. Team Fight Tactics is a spin-off of a spin-off of a mod of Warcraft 3. Confusing, I know. TFT is a strategy game where players compete to see who can amass the strongest army for the fights they partake in. These fights are done by the champions from the main League of Legends game. Players start by choosing a champion, and then go on to buy more champions and strengthen their team. TFT is often referred to as an auto chess. However, the game doesn't play out like a normal game of chess. The fighting is done completely autonomously. When the fight starts, all of the characters come to life and start to duke it out to see who comes out on top. The fighting might be done automatically, but the player still has a huge impact on the outcome of the match. Between battles, players have time to purchase new champions with the in-game currency received each round. If a player gets three of the same champion, they will then merge and their rank will increase by one. This maxes out at rank three. Players can also give items to their champions to increase their strengths or defenses. Items can even be combined to form new and greater items to better help out their champions. Better items, better abilities. Better abilities, better champions. Better champions, better chance at winning. Each player starts out with 100 HP, which will go down when they lose a battle. The game goes on round by round until all but one player has lost all of their HP. The last player standing is the winner. There is a lot more about TFT than just that, and I would recommend giving it a shot as it is free to play for everyone. Upon playing it, you may even come to the same realization that I had when I first started. That, of course, is that the Pokemon Company should make their own iteration of an auto chess. And on that thought, it's time to go deeper. Let's find out exactly how an auto chess in the world of Pokemon would play out. Right at the start, I want to say probably my most controversial decision for a Pokemon auto chess. My idea is for the game to be made for a mobile platform. There could be a possibility of it coming to something like the Switch, but ultimately, it'll be made with mobile phones in mind. The reason for this will become more apparent, but essentially, it would be to piggyback off of the success of Pokemon Go and the more recent Pokemon Masters, and TFT Mobile as well. Also, not everyone has a Switch, but these days, just about everyone over the age of 10 has a smartphone. That said, let's continue to the gameception I've devised. Riot Mort, the lead designer on TFT, was actually asked recently about the potential of a Pokemon out of chess. I had the idea for this back when TFT first came out, but hearing Mort talk about it gave my idea credibility. Here's the clip. Uh, you joked about making a Pokemon auto chess if you could. Would the items be TMs? So if I was doing Pokemon auto chess, the thing I would actually take away is the whole economy. I think the economy is one of the things that makes this game a little like hard to access. So I would just like... Every turn you get to pick from like 10 Pokemon and that's it. The biggest thing that I took away from this thought was that a Pokemon auto chess should be made in such a way that would allow for anyone to be able to quickly pick it up and play. Pokemon is made with a younger audience in mind, however it is intended for all ages. So let's follow that same philosophy with the concept. The main thing that Mort talked about would be to do away with the economy system found in TFT, which makes perfect sense. If you were to make a game available for all ages, you would want to make it seem very approachable from the start. We see this in the current Pokemon video games, where the general gameplay is very simple and that anyone could understand. With a Pokemon Auto Chess, I would start it with something basic, something familiar. From the beginning of the game, the player would choose their starting Pokemon, similar to how a player in TFT chooses their first champion, or how a trainer chooses their first Pokemon. Players would be shown three Pokeballs with random Pokemon inside of them. They would also be shown a berry that the Pokemon would come with and would give them a statistical buff. The play area would look something like this. The top would contain important information such as the player's HP and their opponents as well. It would also show the types of the Pokemon each player would have on the field. From there, the player could click on one of them to get more information about each type. The middle, of course, would be the play area. Each player would have access to three rows of four hexagons. They could arrange their Pokemon however they see fit. Moving down, we see the Pokemon on reserve, or as I like to think of it, the PC box. Players could drag Pokemon from there and add them to their board. At the bottom, there are three larger buttons. The far left is the bag, which is where items would go when received. The middle is the shop, which is where a player would choose which Pokemon they want for the round. 
Finally, the far right is a way for players to release the Pokemon they don't want to hold on to anymore. Much like in TFT, the player would assemble their team as the game progresses. The team would max out at 6 and it would consist of Pokemon that have differing types akin to TFT's class system. Each round you would be presented with 9 random choices from a pool of Pokemon. Ranking up Pokemon would also work like TFT in that you would have to get multiple of the same monster to get them to evolve. Upon evolving, they will be stronger and better suited to win fights. Just like in the main games, players could also make use of items that are found in the game to increase the strengths of their Pokemon. These items and evolutions would help each Pokemon while facing off an opponent that may have a type advantage. That is all I want to touch on with the main mechanics of how the game would play. If you are interested in more, such as the way items work and Pokemon available, feel free to check out the link in the description to dive a bit deeper into the game mechanics that I have thought out. Moving on, there would also be an online ranking system that would reset on occasion. The rankings would follow the same structure found in the current online ranked battles in Pokemon Sword and Shield, those being Beginner, Pokeball, Great Ball, Ultra Ball, and Master Ball tiers. To reward players, they would be able to unlock skins and the like for playing the game. From the things I have shown and talked about thus far, it's clear to see that this is heavily modeled after TFT. In all reality, a lot of the things that I put together were concepts and ideas found in TFT that I took and Pokemonified. <laughs> That said, I still feel there are some things that we can do in this game to make it feel more like Pokemon. Firstly, where this would be a spin-off of the Pokemon franchise, we need to make sure that it can still expand the world of Pokemon. Much to the same way that Pokemon Masters is done, there would be a story mode of sorts. Players would be able to compete with famous trainers found in the Pokemon universe, such as Misty, or Blue, or Cynthia, and yes friends, our hero of Galar, our undefeated champion, Leon. The goal of the story mode would be to build upon the characters that are found in the Pokemon world, as well as teaching the basics of the game to get players ready for the online matches. Not only would the player be able to battle against some of their favorite characters in Pokemon, but they would also be able to go against tough Pokemon with a chance to catch them. You may start a round instead of going against a player, you find that you are fighting a boss like Mewtwo. Upon defeating the Pokemon, you would have a chance to capture and then add it to your collection. The last thing that I felt needed to be added to make this truly feel like Pokemon would be some sort of integration with the main series games. The easiest way to do this would be for the game to be compatible with Pokemon Home. When winning matches, players might be rewarded with battle points that they could use in the game shop or they could send them to Pokemon Home where they can then in turn be sent to the mainline games like Sword and Shield. As we see in some of the past Pokemon spin-off games, you are able to transfer some of the Pokemon to the main series games. Games like Colosseum and the Ranger titles allowed players to transfer the Pokemon they caught to the standard games. Much like these, players would be able to also transfer Pokemon they catch to Pokemon Home. Pokemon has a bit of a reputation of making some odd and obscure spin-off titles, and with the more recent ones like Go and Masters being made by outside developers for mobile platforms, it gives me hope that the Pokemon company would be willing to give a gameception like this a shot. Thank you all for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Gameception. Like I said last time, feel free to comment in the, the, in the comment section below if you have any other ideas that you would like to see, you know, be made into a Gameception. Thanks again. Hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day, and we'll see you later.